Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning, wherever the fuck you're located. This is Alex Ditton. I'm with Underground Noise. Hit that subscribe button, like it, share it with your friends. This is webisode number 38. I'm here with Brian Smith and Timothy Grochi from the band Hemlock. And Brian also plays in Grindstone Creek and Stranger Than Paradise. And one other band that I forgot about. Monday's Child. Little, oh, that's little, right. Uh, yep, yep, absolutely. Actually, funny story. Mr. Sir Timothy Gross is in all four bands with me. That's amazing. Yep, we're busy boys. <laughs> we're going to get musical wedding rings True. pretty soon. Now, that'll be pretty <laughs> swell. <laughs> <laughs> First off, yep. I'd like to ask you guys this question. Who are your musical influences? Woo! They're all over the place. Obviously, I'm a big 80s fan, so let, I could just throw a handful, first handful that come to the top of my mind. Huey Lewis in the News, Neil Diamond, Slayer, Skid Row, Two Live Crew, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, that cover enough? Oh, I stole one of his answers. I'm I sorry. was going to say, I'm I was, sorry. You actually stole most of my answers. Okay. Okay. But well, what do you got, Sam? What you got? I tell you what, up there, probably influence wise, I'm going to say probably Steve Ray Vaughn and a lot of ACDC myself. Ooh, I like that. But uh, not quite too live crew. I'm a big NWA fan and a big Slayer fan. So, and then also Huey Lewis in the news. But I think everybody's a fan of Huey Lewis in the news. So it's not really fair to just say it loud. I'd say a good amount. A good amount of us are, yeah, most definitely. I don't know my, <laughs> I don't know if my mother would listen to Huey Lewis in the news, but hey, you never know. If you introduce it to her, more power to her. Sure, sure. Well, as far as I'm, I'm sure you're talking, uh, going the Hemlock route, more of the metal influences. When we first started, obviously, sure, Slayer, you know, old Metallica, um, Biohazard, Propane, huge influence. We love those guys. Been able to tour with them a few times. Love that band. Um, you know, White Zombie. Pantera, if I didn't already say them, Machine Head, you know, a lot of the early 90s thrash, groove metal, uh, stuff like that. Old Sepultura, um, the new metal stuff we were big into as well. You know, you know, Korn and, and Limp Bizkit, Deftones, all those bands when they came out as well. Um, so, yeah, just as far as Hemlock goes, we got a huge just variety mishmash of, of, of everything that's influenced us. But starting out, those were a lot of the bands we were really into in the early days. How do you guys find time in between bands, like all the bands that you're in? Time for what? Anything but music? Because that's about what it is. A little sleep? And you get oh, a little nap. Music, like, for when you guys practice. Sure. Well, we just got done with Stranger Than Paradise rehearsal. So we got a big, uh, it's an 80s uh, hair metal band. And we uh, we just rehearsed for an 80s prom we're doing in a couple weeks. So literally just got done with that before doing this interview with you. So uh no rest for the wicked we keep pretty busy yep that's what's up every day i think every day yep. is filled with some whether it's practicing on your own or and then the big get togethers on the saturdays yep. and the sundays and then show times yep our phone calls it's funny we'll jump between all four bands and then segue back again just talk about whatever so as far as shows go we'll kind of prioritize like who's got what next okay we got to get a rehearsal in or at least listen to the songs and yeah. then uh and then working on original music with a couple of the bands in the middle of tracking so yeah there definitely is a lot going on so. <laughs> that's cool but we have fun with it keeps us out of trouble other than that it really does <laughs> it really does keep you out of trouble it's no time for no time for sorrow. <laughs> That's right. No time for sorrow. That was my next question. Where was that filmed at? And also, where was this song, No Money, No Love, filmed? Mm, okay. Well, uh, start with No Time for Sorrow. We filmed that in Seattle. Um, we had a location. The guy approached us. It was our first official music video we did. We had a location scattered out. We went there, set up. We were about to hit go, and a lady came and very politely chased us out. And You guys don't have permits, private property, get off here. So we were pretty bummed. So me and uh, one of our guitar players at the time ran around. Typical Seattle started raining. We're running up and down these alleys and just asking everyone. We found a bike shop and a few other shops uh, in the area. And we asked, we, we looked in their alley. We're like, if we clean this out tomorrow, can we come back, film a video? We'll put everything back the way it was. And they said, okay, cool. So uh, sure enough, we started extra early the next day, cleaned it out. Sun came out. Everything was wonderful. Filmed the video. 
a lady comes around the corner after, you know, it, it takes a while to get all the takes and I'm tracking the last of my drums and we see a lady come around the corner and then a couple cars. And it's like, you could tell people are starting to complain businesses. You know, we were pushing our luck Filmed the last scene, got out of there just in time. Shortly after that started raining again. So we were blessed that day. So no time for sorrow turned out great. We're, we're definitely thrilled the way that came out. Um, we do a lot of fun stuff. Like while we're driving too, we were in the bus and just brainstorming middle of tour and we were going to go to tombstone the next day tombstone arizona where is, is where that was filmed and we were just kind of brainstorming and having fun like oh it'd be a hoot we should go film a music video there well we also had filmed the videos summer of youth content where angels fear to tread and quicksand i believe all around the same time like within a week a couple of them within a day so we had a chart of like what we were wearing for continuity purposes got to change back into the summer of youth content video shoot, you know, for this scene. So we were jumping all over the place. It's pretty wild, but um, uh, we, we had our, our guy with us. And so we decided to go to tombstone, Arizona. We went to Walmart the day, but the night before it was around Halloween time, I believe too, got all the costumes and went and filmed it. And what's funny is it was so short notice every once in a while, I'll trim up a little bit. I literally had trimmed my stash and sideburns the day before. We got the, as you see, the mustaches that all the guys are wearing in, in the video. We only had a set of three of those, so I didn't get one. And I just shaved. So I was bummed at myself that <laughs> I didn't have a big mustache in that video. So I was the only one without, so you'll see me. I'm all, all trimmed up. I still have the goatee, but the, the stash was pretty trimmed down. And I'm like, I guess I was the last guy to get a mustache. I don't get one. So. <laughs> But uh, but it was fun. It was a blast. People kept coming up and asking to take pictures with us. We didn't have permits either. We just went there and you know guerrilla style hit hit the cameras and, and just started filming some funny some funny shots. And uh, yeah, people thought we were part of the tourist attraction. Coming up asking for photos with us and everything. We just played it off. So we snuck in a couple <laughs> places we probably shouldn't have been and got our shots and got out again just as well. So it was, it was a fun shoot as well. Just super fun. That's really cool. Now, in that video, Summer of Youth content, I was going to ask you, were you really urinating or was that a prop with a squeeze water bottle? No, that was really me. And the guy that did the editing added the sound effects a little more severe. And the fact that he keeps cutting away and cutting back to it, it seemed epic. Well, seriously, we all wanted to kind of get off the bus. That was the opening segue driving through the desert. We all thought it'd be funny to have our own thing. So Jesse, you see in there is playing video games as he always did and kind of stumbles off the bus. Aaron came out kind of hung over wiping his face, you know, ready to rock. Um, I did. I mean, I, I drink a lot of water, therefore I piss a lot. So we thought it'd be funny for me to run off the bus and do it. Well, it's taken forever to get all the shots. The opening scene as the bus pulls up. I had drank probably a gallon of water by this point i'm like guys we got to get to my shot soon we're gonna waste this you know and we're filming so i legit ran off that wasn't acting i really had to go so yeah the guy hollywooded it up a little bit worse than it was but yes that is legit a uh real piss scene absolutely thank you very much I claim to fame right there i'm not sure if anybody's ever asked you that question brian so i figured no, I'd no, I, it out no there. one has so that's actually that is funny um there was a lot of things again with those videos that we all filmed the ones i named um for some reason we wanted to have 40s in every video and i think we tried to get at least aaron if not aaron and jesse to throw up in every video so we were just having fun with it and we were just trying we, we found all these 40s of i think it was mickey's we were drinking and you just see random shots of us drinking in these videos running around and then there's like one puke singing in every single video for some reason i don't know we were crazy but it was fun that is funny though because yeah. <laughs> I personally was thinking, are they playing Edward Forty hands over there? Right, 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 right. Yep. I mean, you just need to duct tape it around your hand and just like, okay, I'm stuck. What do I do? Right, right. Traveling rock bands is silly nonsense that you talk about and do on the road. We just tied some of our, I guess you'd call it everyday life into those videos. <laughs> the last time I saw you guys play was there in Las Vegas, New Mexico at El Rialto. Yeah. You remember that show pretty well? Absolutely. That's a fun spot. Love those guys there. Yep. Abe and the whole fam always treated us very well. We had a, we have a great time there. Because I remember when I went outside to smoke a cigarette and next thing you know, I'm like, okay, they're playing my favorite song right now. My eyes itch. Ah, yep. How long did it take you guys to record that song? Um, 
well, that was originally on Bleed the Dream. We've got a couple variations. We also recorded it on 25, the kind of greatest hits, as you'll have it, um, uh, album as well. Whereas that one we tracked super quick. The previous one, I, I don't know, it's tough to say. I mean, usually anytime we record with, uh, primarily, sorry, I'm going to ramble a little bit, segue story. Usually when we track something, it's drums then bass, then your guitars, then vocals, and then you'll add whatever else you can add. Um, the, the two most newest albums we recorded, drums were actually the last thing we did. So that was kind of a backwards approach. But if we were to just track a, a song in a single day, we could uh, we could easily knock something out like that probably in just a couple hours time as far as tracking goes. So um, majority of the time we have songs pre-written we've played them live several times so once you get to the studio it's like record single take maybe two takes good to go so um pinpointing an exact time for a specific song we don't we're still old school we like full albums versus just the single the flavor of the month i don't know that we've really tracked a one-off really ever so um like I said, completion, we could easily knock out a couple songs a day. There's times I've done a full album worth of drum parts in a single day. Uh, and then you'd come back the next day and do guitars and bass and whatnot. So it's definitely kind of hard to break down per hour, you know, how long a song would take. But a song like My Eyes Itch, if we were to go track it again right now, we could probably knock it out in an hour total, you know, and then have someone mix and master it. Or this guy right here. Also, if you can see the little sun, we give a shout out to Lions Den Recording Studio right there. I see the so, banner in the background. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I got the full board. Got Gizmo, if you can see him. He's hiding over our shoulder. So, oh, joining us today. Gizmo. Gizmo. <laughs> that's perfect. Yep. <laughs> now, Tim, I've never met you in person, but what, what brand guitar do you like to use the most? Oh, as far as Hemlock. As far as Hemlock goes... I think the LTD ESP era is more my favorite. It's more of the smoothest. It takes, thir I think, 13s is what I restrung with last on them. And it takes those string, those gauge of strings really well. It's heavy. <laughs> you can just kind of really bash it out and it, you know, doesn't warble or go out of tune or anything. And you can do your jumping around. And I know when my hand lands, I what it's going to sound like. So those are my favorite. You put a good set of uh, Ernie Balls on there some paradigms and a good uh, ltd sp guitar and good good set of emgs can't go wrong with it. it's just class just classic metal though so and i'm like say so i like the pantera and the just good heavy slayer stuff and you don't need a bunch of uh bells and whistles for that you just need some stuff like that and you're rocking and rolling tune them down a little bit lower and uh yeah we, we got two sounds of hemlock heavy and heavier so yes. you know <laughs> That's no clean guitar needed, you know, no ballads with hemlock. So. No pedal boards, no nonsense. Yeah, yeah. No, no time for sorrow. No tap. There you go. Segue again. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that one time when I saw you guys and I asked you, Brian, how many tattoos you have, but you said to me, I've lost count. But right. what, do you, what do your knuckles say? Mine say rock you all. But when you turn them around, it says you all rock. Oh, that's cool. I like that. That's clever. That's cool. Mine again, uh, hemlock wise, shut down name of one of our albums that fit just perfectly so but then if you segue a little lower uh, next set of nucks i got some uh, bands that we've played with uh toured with whatnot their emblems and then on this hand again hemlock i got the first two are no time or i'm backwards here yeah no money no love are the first two okay and then no time for sorrow i got a little clock and i got a little uh what is that a four with a teardrop so kind of two songs in one so this whole arm's all my hemlock stuff and it's kind of crept up and over a little bit more uh also working on a lower back piece right now as well uh off the new hemlock cover but it's not done yet but yeah anytime anyone asks me now how many tattoos do you have i just say one yeah one big one it's all, it's all connected somehow. i'm never connected at this point <laughs> i really like those yeah especially the obsession tattoo that one's really cool oh yeah thanks yeah. thanks Obsession, and then I went back to uh, same guy Brian Gentry, uh, great friend of ours. Um, had him do engraved. Boy, it's hard to center this right, but engraved on the other arm, which is another one of our songs off the same album, and it's one of my favorite tunes as well. So anymore, I guess from crossing the arm, we got Obsession and Engraved both. Engraved to the Obsession. How about that? There you go. Ooh. There you go. All right. Sounds like a new song. We'll just do a little medley mashup. That would, that would be my new favorite one if you guys were to do something like that. Nice. 
Cool deal. <laughs> so tell me something, Brian. When it comes to the guitarists, why do you guys always change up guitarists? Gotta keep it fresh. We're never gonna change again because I love these guys. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I myself took took a little time off in the band several years ago, just uh, due to the cost of touring, and I had my son and just a lot of other uh, personal things going on. So Chad's the hundred percent diehard, nonstop. Uh, as far as changing up guitar players, there's different things all the time. One guy meets a groupie and falls in love. The next guy might get married. The next guy moves or so many different things you know people have sometimes commented on that but i'm like any more unless you got the huge rock star budget and even then plenty of bands still change members i'm like you don't work with the same guys you worked with five years ago or most of the time you know so it's compared to mcdonald's i mean ask any or any place you know i ask anyone at their job you still have the same guys for 30 years probably not so just so much time in there and some people think they can handle it. They get out on tour and realize they can't or they fulfilled whatever. We've taken guys out that we knew were just kind of a fill in before, but these last two guys really stepped up and helped us uh, finish up the tail end of the tour uh, between him and Jared both. And at the end of that run, I'm like, you guys can't go anywhere. And they're both in both guitar players, including Jared are in stranger than paradise. So when we had them come out and finish the tour, first of all, I could vouch for them because I knew they were both killer musicians, singers, performers, um, I knew they were both responsible and I knew we were good friends. We just have a blast. So it was a no brainer to bring them out. And again, we haven't toured. We're going to do a couple of small things, little runs during the summer, maybe something in the fall, but next year's for sure the big year for 30 year anniversary. So I want to push really hard next year. I'm sure it'll work for you guys. And I'll be a lot more responsible by then. Ha! Ah. Well, he'll, he'll learn a couple more tunes. You got any you want to request while we're here? Well, let's see. How about my eyes itch? You already know this, don't you? Yes, we got it. it. We can play it right now. No yep. problem. We got you. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> you can find on that. We'll come through and play my eyes itch dedicated right to you. Right on. Right on. I do appreciate it because that, that song just stands out so hard and it always makes me want more. Very cool. All right. Because you got that double bass thumping around and then you got the snare drum smacking around almost like a gravity blast. I'm like, damn, this uh, is fucking sick. Cool like deal. Black hole of heavy. Well, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That's one that uh, that song also went out on a bunch of Jägermeister sampler CDs. Or yeah, it was on one of the Jaeger CDs. Uh probably popped up a couple other spots. So that's one of the ones. What's funny is most people, if we had a hit, a lot of people would claim uh, nobody knows what a killer looks like. But I would definitely say my eyes itch is a good runner up with that as well. That a lot of times we'll play. There have been times in the past where we'd play live and someone would, I don't know, maybe they had a burn CD without bands on it. They're like, no way, that's you guys, because they'd hear us play it. And we're like, yeah, that's us. That's our song. So um, that one definitely made its rounds for sure. So that's a good one. We'll definitely make sure that's in the next set for sure. Yeah, I got my woman listening to Hemlock one day. She's like, I really like those guys. They look like they're a lot of fun. She's not nice. a huge metal fan, but I've been getting her in a little bit of it here and there. Like you guys, uh, Crusadist, in human condition, a little bit of suffocation. Nice. So well, very cool. We're, we're honored to be in in uh, the list of bands that she likes as well. That's cool. Yeah, you guys are right there. I may have asked you this before, Brian, but who's older, you or Chad? I am older by two years. No one ever believes it. Yeah, you do He's look a lot younger. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks. <laughs> also, by shenanigans, I don't party as much as I used to, but I was, I was Chad was uh, the responsible one, and I'd have a lot of fun. I mean, I'd still play my drum parts, but I was the party boy for sure. So I think people might have associated that with him being the older brother, me being younger. But nope, I'm actually two years older than him. The reason why I ask is because if you do vocals, it ages you a little bit more. Maybe that's it. Absolutely. Yeah, I got a terrible voice, so I just hit drums. So. <laughs> So that must be it. That's why I'm so young. Face of a 22 year old right here. Mm -hmm. A little I bit still, of gray here and there, still, regardless. Yeah. Yeah, I got the white hairs too, so don't feel too bad. Right, right, right. We're vintage I turned, rockers. I just turned 43 this year, so I'm looking forward nice. to more years. Very cool. Absolutely. Yep. We're not even halfway there yet. We got time. Yeah, we got time to burn. <laughs> yep. A lot of rockers to be had. Yep. So what keeps your energy up? A lot of water, a lot of drinks, what? Funny you mention that. 
actually got my water right out of the out of the camera shot. But yes, I drink a ton of water. Uh, coffee, we drink a lot of coffee. Well, some of us do. Um, energy drinks were sponsored by. Well, uh, we're not going to talk about sponsors at the moment. <laughs> but we've drank one one too many energy drinks. Sometimes I think I get a little hyper at times. But uh, but yeah, um, caffeine levels sure, but just. Having fun. I think taking care of yourself, trying, you know, just trying to be in shape. We're a little more aware of getting a little bit older. Chad, especially. Chad looks incredible. He's lost so much weight over the last few years. Uh, just super into fitness, you know, stretching, you know, all, all the stuff that sounds boring, but actually keeps you limber and young and active and, and feeling good. So let you do all the things that you really want to do. Right, right. Little, little less partying than I used to, a little more aware of the health aspect, health side of it, so that we can have the longevity. We can perform for 30 years. We can go out on a two month tour and not be winded playing, you know, an hour and a half, two hour show every night. So uh, uh, just aware, but yes, water. I preach water all the time. I'm a big water fan for sure. Yeah. Water, water is a good way to go. Stay hydrated. Yeah. yeah. With me Absolutely. personally, it's mountain dew and water. There you go. That'll keep you, keep you rocking. Mountain Dew's a good mm. standard, sir. I've had to tell a lot of people that Mountain Dew has more flavors than condoms. I think it's true because Mountain Dew's got like over 30 flavors. Oh, yeah, right? One of my friends had asked me one time, they're like, well, how many condoms have you tasted? I'm like, zero. Uh, I got a story for that. I actually had one in my mouth once, but anyway. <laughs> Speaking of X-rated, that would be one of the X-rated stories, but regardless. <laughs> you could probably um, save that for another one. Yeah, we'd save that for another one. I mean, I'll have a couple of drinks first, then I'll talk way too much trash. But yeah, yeah. So <laughs> sticking on the Mountain Dew side of thing, I'm a, I'm a Baja Blast fan. That's the one thing I talk about. We do eat a lot of Taco Bell, especially on tour. There's a lot of good uh, vegetarian and vegan options as well. Um, Chad and his wife are straight vegan. I converted to vegetarianism. I had a little bit back and forth. Cheese has been the tough one for me. But uh but yeah, you know, if we can get some good catering in or something great, we're also big uh, fans of potatoes. Been rocking a lot of potatoes again lately. So, yeah. It's funny that you mentioned Taco Bell because I saw a meme the other day on Facebook. And it says, I paid $1.39 for gas today. Unfortunately, it was at Taco Bell. Ah, uh, <laughs> yep, yep. I'm like, well, That's whoever came over that was a genius. Right, right. Yep. You figure gas prices are what, like five, ten bucks a gallon wherever you're at. Depends. We're out in Missouri right now, so it's considerably cheaper. Probably what three sixty nine is the average I see yeah. per gallon. But I just got home from Vegas a couple of days ago, and uh, yeah, that's pushing five, five fifty, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Um, I've seen some spots being six ish and whatnot. So yeah, I only filled up once there, and I can't. I don't recall. It was maybe five something. But yeah, Taco Bell's definitely cheaper. So. <laughs> Yeah, I remember old school talking about what it was at 59, 79, 99. I think that was their little <laughs> jingle. Yeah, super cheap. Like that, yeah. Yeah. But and those uh, burritos, yeah. locos, tacos, you can't go wrong with those. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I love some Taco Bell for sure. I'm getting hungry. a chance, Brian. You should try the Mountain Dew Flaming Hot. I saw that. Is that pretty good or what? Yeah, actually, it's not too bad. But if you slam it too fast, it'll burn your nose and your throat. Woo! <laughs> wow. So I think it might well. be cayenne pepper inside it. Wow. I, I'm going to have to try some, though. Thanks for the head, the warning, though. So I'll just <laughs> sip gently on it. Yeah, have that's one way to enjoy it. Because I collect the cardboard. You know, what I'll do is I'll take a 12-pack and I'll cut it out. So it's like a rectangle and hang it on the wall somewhere. But I haven't decorated the wall here. I'm waiting until we get a new house. So Okay. Mountain Dew wallpaper. Yeah. Custom. Yeah, I have my own Mountain Dew section on the wall. I have the hemlock section. And just nice. put everything in alphabetical order. Cool. I love it. We're going to have to work on that Mountain Dew sponsorship next. So. Yes, that will be next, most definitely. We'll bring, we'll bring a case yeah. with us. <laughs> Hemlock has been sponsored by Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Oh, that here first. And Taco Bell. I'll take it. And Taco Bell. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> Sounds good. Hemloco Taco. Yeah, we'll have our own custom uh, taco. That sounds yeah. exciting. Hey, that does sound good. Hem Loco Taco. <laughs> hey, you came up with a good <laughs> idea there, Tim. <laughs> oh, I like that. You hear this catchphrase right here? What's oh, he saying? Nobody, nobody knows what a chalupa looks like. 
<laughs> yeah. Running hot. Yeah, that's very true. I was about to say, yeah, drop the chalupa like, you know, the old Taco Bell dog did. Right. Yeah, drop the chalupa. <laughs> yeah. I love Sounds it. Sounds good. We'll be the new post poster, boys. That'll, that'll work. Sounds good. Sign me up. For reality. Ooh, I, I got him. I got him right he's getting, here. He's getting clever here. We got to keep this guy around. He's got some creativity flow, and I, I can see his brain just going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's swelling. That hemlock hat holds it all in, so yeah. it just seeps out his ears a little bit at a time. Too much epic at once. You know, it can be an over uh, overwhelming overload for some people. Is that what that is? <laughs> uh, that, the fingertips, you know, he's got it. Now, what would but you that's why I don't mean? have any room for anything else. That's why it's tea and water only. Oh. If there's anything else, I couldn't handle it. Right. Now, what's your favorite thing about being a musician? Take this. Oh, oh, that's a tough one. You know what it is? And I was actually thinking about this the other day. It's almost like a live puzzle coming together because you got your drums, you got your different elements all swarming together. It's like driving in traffic. And it's like at any point, anybody could just, just swerve off the road. But, you know, for three and a half minutes, you sit there and everybody's doing these individual parts that all of a sudden come together as, to fans and listeners which we are too just one glorious sound and that's my favorite part just the inner mechanic connectivity of all these parts that form a song so that's my favorite part that's why it's a joy getting to just be a part of that and you're you're sitting there playing your guitar and then you know just being one of the four pieces of this machine coming together that forms this awesome stuff so that's my that's my favorite part I'd have to say I love touring and seeing places, but mostly meeting new people and then getting these really cool friendships because of it. Um, on the musical side itself, I absolutely love the live show. Absolutely. I also love recording because that's forever. But I think I would say to mesh the two, I would say music videos are a blast and probably one of my favorite because then you get the visual, the music, and it's forever. So kind of captures a moment in time. I don't mind the hard work. I don't mind long video shoots. I don't mind repetitious. You got to do the same take 20 times at a different angle. Cool. I'm all about it. That's uh, it's putting a stamp on something and making it forever. So yep. yeah, I love, I love everything about, you know, playing music, obviously. Well, the paycheck would be a little bit nicer. It's kind of hard to make music, you know, a handful of uh, bands at the top. You know, I always joke about it'd be nice to make that Metallica paycheck, but uh, <laughs> other than that, we have, we don't do it for the music anyway. We do it because we, we, I mean, we do it for the music. We don't do it for the money. Oh, uh, there it is. The yeah, yeah. Freudian slip. Hey, That's okay. No, uh, no, we obviously do it because we love playing music. Absolutely. Yep. That's very cool. Well, I really can't think of many other questions to ask you guys. Do you have any last words for Underground Noise? Uh, I'm just saying, if you want to check us out online, obviously we got a ton of videos all over YouTube. Uh, our merch, we always have a really good extensive merch thing you can find. Well, obviously at a live show, definitely come there. Um, but also uh, on uh, hemlockworld.com, uh, Facebook slash hemlockworld. Uh, we're out everywhere else. I don't know, Twitter and uh, Instagrams and all that stuff, but I'm a big Facebook dude. And, uh, yeah, definitely just come out and catch live shows. And as soon as we can get near you again, or come travel to see us too somewhere. Absolutely. Everybody that's listened to this webisode. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my new subscribers, support Hemlock, support underground noise webzine and support the metal community. Absolutely. Thanks guys. Love Thank you. you. I see you. I caramba. <laughs> that too. Nobody knows what troopers look like. There we go. Right. Are we supposed to like leave the room? Is that, <laughs> is that the segue exit? Um, Cue music.